and I thought some of your movie hot takes were hot. Brace yourselves. What's going on guys, I'm Chris, and welcome back to another video. So today I'm reacting to your TV show hot takes. I did a movie hot takes video where I reacted to all those. You can check that out linked up above, but this is a sort of part two of that, as you guys submitted damn near 200 TV show hot takes for me to take a look at. So I scrolled through and I found about 40 of them to go through here today. And my God, you guys really committed to the hot part of the takes. Before I get into this though, hit that like button, comment down below your TV show hot takes or your response to some of these in this video and consider subscribing and hitting that notification bell as I'm trying to hit my goal of 75,000 subscribers here on the channel. It would mean a lot. Without further ado, let's conquer these hot takes or at least try to. All right, starting with one that upsets me. The Falcon and the Winter Soldier is the worst MCU TV show. I mean, that's just wrong. That's just wrong. Look, you cannot like that show, but when it's going up against shows like She-Hulk or Moon Knight or even WandaVision, The Falcon and Winter Soldier is just superior in quality. In fact, if you guys haven't watched that show since March of 2021, I urge you to give it another look because I rewatched it with Cam a few times, and it really is a quality show that puts a focus on character arcs more than any of the others. It has a solid ending where it feels like everyone had a journey that was necessary. The weakest part is the Flag Smashers being the main antagonists, but there's like a handful of MCU projects that have elite MCU villains, so I think that little gripe that a lot of us have with the show is far outweighed by the amazing elements, notably Sam Wilson becoming Captain America and going on that journey, Bucky rediscovering himself and finally living a new life apart from this torture, this hell that he's been in. There's really great character moments. There's awesome humor that doesn't feel forced. It's one of the best written MCU Disney Plus shows. And again, I encourage you guys to watch that if you haven't seen it since it came out because it gets a really bad rap in my opinion. Next from Robert, Grey's Anatomy is awful. <laughs> I'll say this, why the hell is it still going after 20 seasons? That's disgusting actually. But I've actually been watching some episodes recently with my girlfriend Cam. It's one of her shows in her rotation that she rewatches. I don't think it's terrible. You know, I think that it's all right. I don't think it's awful. I've heard the later seasons get pretty dumb. From what I've seen though, it's entertaining enough and it definitely has its audience. So I don't think it's awful. This one's from Vinny B with a John Wick profile picture. Friends is unfunny and boring. For the longest time, I agree with you and I would always trash on Friends. <laughs> I still don't think it's that funny, so you're not wrong. This is another one of those shows that my girlfriend Cam has in her rotation, so I've seen episodes here and there lately and I really don't think it's that funny. I think there are moments of like, oh, that was, that was pretty clever. And I like the celebrity cameos, especially the Brad Pitt episode, but it is one of the more boring and least watchable sitcoms to me. I'd rather go with Seinfeld, That 70s Show, The Office, you know, shows like that. How I Met Your Mother, of course. These are all shows that I prefer over Friends. I don't think it's terrible, like I used to say, but it's definitely not the funniest show. That's a fact. This one is from Mega Star Wars Rocks 99. Andor is boring, and people are super pretentious about it. There's no correlation between what you watch and how smart you are. I'll just address the first part of that. Um, I don't think Andor's boring at all. In fact, I think that it is actually one of the better executed Star Wars shows because it's like a slow burn. This season is structured in a way where there's like three to four episode arcs. So a few episodes are gonna build up to an ultimate event, whether that be a heist, a prison break, or a riot in the streets, Andor knew what it was doing. In fact, it was a nice parallel to modern society. It actually touched on real world things in a Star Wars way that worked, but the character casting Andor was really compelling this season. We learned so much more about him that just enhances Rogue One for me. We got some intense moments. The prison break arc is my favorite with Andy Serkis giving a hell of a performance. It was so riveting. Like I remember watching the episode on a plane, the, the pr prison break episode. I literally had to like stop myself from fist pumping in the air because of how triumphant it was. Like this show, rock. It's some of the best written Star Wars content we've seen in a long time. I disagree strongly. I don't think it's boring. I don't think that people are being too pretentious about it either. I think that it's just good and people are saying it's good. So that's kind of how I feel. This one's from Adam. Two and a Half Men Before Charlie Sheen Left is one of the best and most underrated comedy shows ever seen on the small screen. It's one of my favorite TV shows in general. I've never really watched Two and a Half Men. It's one of those shows that like growing up, it would be on FX during the summer and I'd be like, oh, maybe I'll throw this on. So I've seen a handful of episodes in my life. I do remember before before Charlie Sheen left that it was one of the more like highly rated shows with a lot of views on the networks. So that's cool, but I haven't really watched it so I can't give my two cents. Let me know what you guys think of Two and a Half Men down below. Should I ever give it a shot? This one's from Avatar Enthusiast. Moon Knight is one of the best Disney Plus shows. No. <laughs> I think Moon Knight is the most overrated piece of content that Marvel has put out post Endgame. 
everyone is just so obsessed with Moon Knight. It was fine. It had a pretty decent twist in episode four, but then it just became the generic formulaic thing by the end of the finale. And it never gave us real clarity or a sense of purpose or like, why did the show exist? It just had too much ambiguity at the end. And I was like, okay, I forgot about this already. Like I have no desire to see this character again. And I don't think he fits into the MCU, honestly. Like, I don't know where he's going to show up again, where it makes sense. The villain was so weak. Like people overhyped the hell out of Ethan Hawke's villain, Arthur Harrow, and I just don't know. No, I disagree strongly. In terms of MCU, it's one of the weaker ones. In terms of Disney Plus shows, The Mandalorian, Andor, and others blow it out of the water. This one's from my good buddy Jacob over at Starcourt Food Court. It's a long one. It's a Cobra Kai one. Cobra Kai never dies. Let's get it. Despite not being taken seriously at award shows or anyone that hasn't seen the show, Cobra Kai is one of the best written TV shows since it was released in 2018. The show does what a lot of legacy sequels or long-running IPs have struggled to do, which is balancing the OG characters, doing them justice, while while making the new ones just special. They pay homage to the past, but don't hang on to it to hurt the current story and its characters. What could be a fault to the show with its cheesiness? The show leans into it knowing what it is, which makes it even more fun. Also, even with Pat Morita passing way before the show released, they make sure every season Miyagi isn't left out of the story, knowing he is the heart of the OG trilogy. Very well said, Jacob. And I agree. I uh, read Ralph Macchio's book recently, and something he talked about was, for years, Ralph Macchio was being pitched all of these spin-off ideas or sequels to the Karate kid, but he never would do it because he felt like Daniel and Mr. Miyagi had to be together, the creators of Cobra Kai, and they really emphasized the importance of Miyagi still having a presence in the show, and that's what really sold him on it. So I appreciate the hell out of that, that they've really kept Miyagi's spirit alive, especially in season three in the Okinawa arc. That was some of my favorite stuff in the entire show. And anytime, you know, Miyagi has like a flashback scene or a moment where Daniel is at a low point and he has a flashback lesson to Miyagi, some of the best elements of the show, and I think you hit the nail on the head hair. It's really well written. It pays respect to the original. It's one of the better legacy sequels we've seen because yes, we got great arcs for Johnny, Daniel, even like Silver and Kreese come into play, but we got Miguel Diaz, Robbie, Sam, new younger characters that connect to a whole new generation. And it does a great job of blending the old with the new so well, which a lot of franchises fail to do. It understands exactly what it is. It's cheesy as hell at times, but like you said, it leans into it. And I 100% agree with you. I think that this show is over hated and we'll talk about Cobra Kai more in this video with some hot takes, but yes, I fully agree. In terms of like a TV show in general, I think people brush it aside like, oh, it's Cobra Kai, it's stupid Karate Kid stuff. If you haven't seen the show, you gotta give it a chance because while it can be cheesy, it embraces that. And I think it's actually really well acted and well written and people just, for some reason, kind of give it a bad rap. Andrew says, Psych is one of the most underrated and underappreciated shows of all time. I have no opinion on this because I've never seen Psych, but I do remember it being on TV at one point. So if I should watch Psych, let me know down below, guys. This one's from Mike Wazowski. Thank you, Mike. Jonathan is underrated in Stranger Things. Ah. Uh, um, I don't know. I don't think so. I think Jonathan's solid in the first season, his best season is season two, and then he kind of just fizzles out after that. He hasn't really had much to do in a while. I'm interested to see his role in season five, but no, I think that he is fine. I think he's properly rated. A lot of people are like, he's okay, and that's kind of how I feel like. I don't hate Jonathan, uh, but I don't think he's underrated. This one's from Crypto saying, I don't think The Walking Dead has a single bad season. I also think that overall it's a top 10 show. I haven't seen enough of The Walking Dead. I've seen maybe two or three episodes in my life. I know a lot of spoilers because in middle school, I didn't care about the show and I was like, yo, tell me what happened in The Walking Dead. And I just, I got a bunch of spoilers that way. So I'm never probably going to watch it because of that. And I've heard that there are some brutal seasons to sit through in the latter half of the show. What do you guys think of The Walking Dead? If you're a fan of the show, should I ever watch it? Let me know. Now this is where the fun begins. Game of Thrones season eight is an epic conclusion in one of the better seasons. Look, to each their own, but Game of Thrones season eight is so far and away the worst season of the show, it's not even funny in my opinion. I don't even think it's that epic of a conclusion. The Battle of Winterfell was wildly overhyped. The episode called The Long Night, you could barely see a damn thing that was happening, but like it didn't do enough for me. I really truly thought there was gonna be more epic moments and it just fell flat, which is sad to say how this threat and the White Walkers just came and went so quickly. Something that was set up from the opening of the first episode came and went so quickly and everything was just brushed over. Like I don't understand how throughout six seasons of this show, the scope and scale of Westeros was felt like everything felt so spread out. Like we had characters going on journeys to get to a location during the entirety of a season. And in season eight, like 
we're there. We're there. It just felt so damn rushed, and I'll never forgive it for that. They really dropped the ball. I still love Game of Thrones. It's an all-time show for me, but season eight did some unforgivable things. Red Charlie Boy says, Rings of Power was actually really good, if you're into Tolkien stuff. I really like the Lord of the Rings trilogy a lot. I like the Hobbit films, too. I just didn't watch Rings of Power at the time, because I was just not in the mood, and everyone said, don't do it. It's not worth your time, so maybe I will. I think that's a hot take, because I know a lot of people were crapping on the show when it came out. Frozen Thing Studios says, Sam is one of the best Cobra Kai characters and is highly misunderstood. I'll go as far as to say I prefer her over Hawk. I agree with you here. I know it is a hot take because a lot of people hate Sam LaRusso. She's a top five, top three damn near character for me. I love her so much and I do prefer her over Hawk. It's not even close for me. Hawk is overrated, but I still really like him. It's just, I can't get past the first few seasons of Hawk being such a jerk. I like him a lot more now, um, but I still have like held on to the fact that for a while there, I really didn't like this guy. He was a punk, but I agree with you and I don't understand the Sam LaRusso hate. I just don't. Bojack Horseman is the best show of all time. If I had seen it, I would tell you what I feel about it, but I wanted to include this because there was no other BoJack Horseman take on here, but I've heard good things. Azid says Terry Silver is the best character on Cobra Kai. I disagree. He's the best villain for sure, but in terms of character, I think there are better characters in the show that have been around since season one and have a little more development. Robert says Ross is the second best, if not best character in Friends. From what I've seen of Friends, he's so clearly the worst character, so I think this is a piping hot take. He's unlikable, unfunny, and just the worst. Justin Mark says SpongeBob will always be the greatest Nickelodeon show to ever appear on TV. It's better than The Last Airbender. Wow. Um, I love Spongebob growing up. There are some hilarious episodes in the early seasons, but you have to look at Spongebob as a whole, I think, and it just like really fell off at a certain point. So I disagree here. In terms of just Nickelodeon, it's a staple. It's a classic. It is on the Mount Rushmore of Nickelodeon shows, no doubt. But I do think that the quality has dipped because for some reason it's still going. The early seasons of Spongebob are gold, I will admit. Hoodie Arch says, not sure if it's unpopular or not, but Cobra Kai season five is one of the weaker seasons, in my opinion. The last three episodes is some of the best in the show though. From what I saw before I watched the show, a lot of people were like Cobra Kai season five is kind of weak. I disagree strongly. It's my favorite season of the show from beginning to end. The first few episodes when we've got the whole Mexico storyline, I loved. It was a way where Miguel could get some clarity on his father, but then realize Johnny is my real father figure. The water park stuff was cheesy greatness and it just added to the dramatic tension. And then of course, by the end of the season, we have some of the most epic moments in the show with literal sword fights happening, like people's lives on the line, people going to jail, like it got wild near the end and uh, I just have really loved this season. In episode five, even the Robbie and Miguel like settling their beef, that was one of the better fights in the show. So there's a lot of highlight moments in season five, so I disagree. Baseball Jacob says, I got two. Star Wars Rebels is the most underrated Star Wars show and Cobra Kai doesn't have a single bad season. I agree, Cobra Kai doesn't have a single bad season and uh, Rebels is underrated. I think people say that too much. I think a lot of people are like, Rebels is so underrated. I don't hear a lot of people saying Rebels is bad. Maybe Rebels is underwatched or underviewed, uh, not seen enough, but like, I don't think it's underrated because I don't think people rate it low, if that makes sense. Like, there's no one out here like, Rebel stinks. Like, I think it's just not talked about enough. I think a lot of people will discover it who haven't watched it when Ahsoka comes out. The Rebels is going to be trending when Ahsoka comes out, for sure. Hell, probably at the end of The Mandalorian Season 3. Joe says, huge hot take. Stranger Things Season 3 is the best season. Joe, I don't know how hot of a take this is because for the longest time, I thought Season 3 was the best season when it came out for three whole years of my life. I now think Season 4 is, but I think a lot of people agree Season 3 is the best right behind that. I don't know. I love season three. The 80s aesthetic, it's fun. It's more lighthearted in a way, but this season rules. It introduces Robin. We've got awesome Jopper moments throughout the season. Steve is maybe at his best in this season. It's a pure summer fun blast. I don't think that's really a hot take. I know a lot of people who love season three. Saying it's the best isn't too hot. Now, if you said season two, that's a hot take, and I think we'll get into some season two talk later. Blank says there is a higher percentage of quality episodes in the Bad Batch compared to the Clone Wars. I strongly disagree with that. And then Bad Batch season two over Mando season three. I'm not caught up on Bad Batch season two, so I can't confirm or deny that in my opinion, but the Clone Wars, I mean, I'm thinking of season seven alone. The final four episodes are better than anything we've got in the Bad Batch by far. That alone to me is like proof enough that Clone Wars is better, but then you've got a lot of great Clone Wars arcs, like you know, stuff on Umbara, the Bad Batch arc in season seven. I mean, I could go on and on. The Mortis trilogy stuff, like all those philosophical questioning of, of the lore of Star Wars, that type of stuff we get in the Clone Wars, we don't really get that in the Bad Batch. So I think Clone Wars is still better than the Bad Batch. And there's a higher percentage of quality ups in Clone Wars than Bad Batch. The Boys season three was underwhelming despite having a 98% on Rotten Tomatoes critic score. Here's what I'll say about that. I really like The Boys season three and I like The Boys. As much as I really like The Boys, I do think it's a little overrated. Overrated does not equal bad. Hammer that into your heads if you're watching. Overrated does not equal bad. Homelander's a menace. It's well acted, well directed, well written show. Bloody as hell knows what it is, but I think a lot of people overhype the show. I don't think it's one of the greatest shows of all time. It's probably fallen on my all time 
all-time list. I think at one point it was on my top 10 favorite shows. I don't think it is anymore, but it's not that rewatchable. And season three wasn't the best thing since sliced bread, like a lot of people did say. So I see where you're coming from. I definitely do. Peace Edit says Robbie over Hawk, as in character and fighting. Fact. Sure, Hawk beat Robbie in All Valley season four, but Robbie could have beat him. He was just sitting there, could have beat him. Robbie had the upper hand. Uh, in character, by far, Robbie's better, um, in my opinion. And in fighting, I probably would still give the edge to Robbie. Is that a hot take? I don't know. This one's from Toon Twist, hearkening back to what I just said about Stranger Things season three. I think Stranger Things season three is the worst season, while season two is the best. I think Mike is the best of the six main kids, and I think Will has been a pretty bad character since season two. I don't think season three is the worst at all. I think season two is the worst, but again, saying that makes it sound like I don't like season two. If we're talking about four seasons, one of them has to be the worst to me. It's season two, but it's it's really actually closer than you guys would think. Season two, but not by a lot. I enjoy the hell out of season two. Mike's the, probably the worst of the main six kids to me, and that's also not really close. He is irritating in a lot of the seasons. Will, Lucas, Dustin, Max, and Eleven are better than Mike. I think most people would actually agree with that. So I don't hate Mike, but man, is he the worst of the six main kids. Chris is, says, Wednesday is so overhyped and overrated. I'm sure that'll spark some stuff. That's going in the thumbnail. Let me know down below how you feel about Wednesday. This is a show that was a global phenomenon starring Jenna Ortega. I enjoyed the show. I really do. I don't think it's overrated. Maybe a little overhyped. I mean, it got on like TikTok edits and it was just going wild. It's not even close to like an all-time show for me, but I really enjoyed it. It was a good show. I don't really have many issues with it. I think saying it's overhyped is fair, but overrated, I don't know. Because if you talk to people who watch it, most people like in real life, not on like TikTok, people are like, yeah, it was good. You know, like it was really good. It was entertaining. Like that's how people feel. Overhyped, yes. It's not one of the best Netflix shows of all time. Um, it's not one of the best shows of all time. It's very entertaining though. Next hot take. Peacemaker is miles better than Invincible and the Boys. I might hear you out on this one. I don't know if it's miles better. I don't know what is the best of these three, but there's a conversation to be had here. I mean, John Cena's performance as Peacemaker and the character arc that he has in that show is incredible, especially coming off the heels of the Suicide Squad. So I'll see that out. I mean, I think it might be better than Invincible and you could argue The Boys. The Boys has a few more seasons, which is obviously going to go in its favor. There's no character like Homelander in Peacemaker where he is just commands the screen and you love to hate him so much. The characters get the edge in the boys, but Peacemaker as a character, his arc is awesome. So I can see where you're coming from. I think Peacemaker almost is disregarded in terms of being one of the better comic book shows we've ever gotten. Wax Buddy says the Scream Netflix show is better than Scream 2 and 3. I'm gonna say no, even though I haven't seen the Scream Netflix show. Is that the one that was like on MTV? Is it now on Netflix or something? I don't know. I've heard so many things about that show just being mass. So I, I probably disagree without even having seen it, but you never know. Lex says Cobra Kai isn't that great. The first season was amazing, but then it dropped in quality and never recovered. Strongly disagree here. I really love the first season of Cobra Kai, but the quality actually gets better. They get a bigger budget. As you learn more about these characters, their arcs just become stronger in each season. And it's like seeing these different characters connect with each other, grow, and finally overcome obstacles and adversity is so satisfying as we get further in. It dives further into the lore of the trilogy and actually enhances those movies as we get further in. So I strongly disagree. I think the quality of the show is just getting better and better and they're gonna stick the landing in season six. I mean, I, I fully believe that. Paige says Outer Banks 3 is the worst season. Yeah, I agree. My ranking would be season 3 at the bottom, then season 1, then season 2. I really like season 2. I've talked to some people recently who aren't as big of fans. I loved it. Took everything I loved about the first season and enhanced it for me. 3, the group was split up a lot. John B's dad was around, which got a little tiresome at times, but like Ward wasn't around as much. The Carlos character was lame. I still love the vibes of this show, but it definitely was the most ridiculous at times of the 3. I still enjoy it. I'll watch the show to the very end, but it is the weakest of the 3, and I think it's pretty cool. Clear. This next take might be valid. Shows over movies. I can totally see where you're coming from. Some of my favorite media out there is television. Like Stranger Things, I think I like more than any movie I've ever seen. Then you've got shows like Breaking Bad, Game of Thrones, Better Call Saul, Cobra Kai, the list goes on and on and on. Sitcoms. There's a wide variety of genres and the thing about TV shows that's better than movies is you've got way more content to know these characters more. You feel like you're friends with them in a way and I just love that aspect of TV. Movies, it's a one quick hitter. You could watch nine episodes of TV in a day and still have way more to watch. It's more immersive. I think there's more room for better arcs. Movies are awesome, and I love going to the movie theater and having popcorn and engaging in this whole movie community, but television today, I think, might be better storytelling and better content quality-wise than movies, especially last year. The TV last year was off the charts good. I think there's a conversation to be had there about how in the current day and age, 
TV shows might be better than movies. The Last Resident says Hawkeye is the best Disney Plus original show. I disagree, but I really like Hawkeye. There's just some other shows that I think are better. Hawkeye gets the short end of the stick. I feel like a lot of people dismiss it because of the return of Kingpin and the manner in which he was maybe taken down by uh, Kate Bishop, but I still think that show is a holiday fun time for sure and very overhated. We got another hot take saying Stranger Things season three is trash. I know someone earlier in the video had said that it's the worst season. I strongly disagree. I don't understand why the season would even get hate. It is pretty much perfect. Simply Cinema, shout out Josh, says, I'm not a big fan of Star Wars or Clone Wars and was much more on board with Star Wars Rebels, even Star Wars Resistance. I heard Resistance is terrible. I haven't watched it because of that, but I heard it's really, really kitty, like, like really childish. I know Rebels is more on like the kitty side too, but it has some really meaningful storytelling in there. The thing about Rebels is that it's more uh, sequential storytelling where like one episode, boom, the next episode, it's like that. You don't have to sort of watch them in arcs and like look up an order online. So I totally get that. Clone Wars might not be for everybody too, you know, and not really following one, one or two main characters throughout. Anakin and Obi-Wan might be in these few episodes and then we've got some clones and some droids. So I get it. What I just love about Clone Wars is how it fills in the gaps of almost every little thing between episodes two and three. I love the Clone Wars over Rebels, but I can totally see where you're coming from. I know people who prefer Rebels. Movies and Train Studios says, I can't stand Outer Banks. I totally get why a lot of people don't like the show. To me, I love it. It embraces what it is. P4L, baby. Keanu says, Better Call Saul is better than Breaking Bad. You know what? For a while after I finished Better Call Saul, I said, I still like Breaking Bad more, but lately I've kind of thought about it and I think Better Call Saul might actually be better. I'm going to do a rewatch eventually of both back to back and um, fully make that decision, but Better Call Saul might actually be the better show. Is that crazy? Hot take warning. Eddie was an overrated character in Stranger Things. I strongly disagree. I love Eddie Munson. He was like an inspiration for so many people out there who felt like outcasts or just wanted a friend to connect with. In many ways, Eddie was like inspiration for them. So um, I don't think Eddie was overrated at all. He was a lovable character, one of the coolest in season four. Watching him shred the guitar in the finale was one of the most badass things I've ever witnessed playing Master of Puppets. I mean, that is so awesome. So no, I don't think that he's overrated by any means. I, I really love this character and um, he's missed. I mean, I truly wish that he was still around for season five. He had such a global impact. I don't think he's overrated. I think he's very properly rated as one of the better characters in the show. John 67 says, Game of Thrones season six is absolutely terrible. The first eight episodes are boring with a very occasional good moment. And the last two episodes are just incredibly well-directed spectacles with no ounce of substance. I disagree. I think season six definitely has some lull moments, but the final two episodes are my two favorite episodes of the show. I think there's a lot of substance because it's six seasons worth of development for these characters. And it was so satisfying watching the Battle of the Bastards because the lot was on the line there. Literally right before the battle began, we watched John watch Rick on die. That was like, oh my gosh, this is emotional. There was a ton of payoff in that. And then episode 10, I mean, there was just wild moment after wild moment. I think there was a lot of emotion in those and I really felt it in my chest. So I don't agree here, but I don't think season six is terrible. I think season four is the best season though. Hero Toy says season two of Stranger Things is the worst season of Stranger Things. I agree, but again, I don't think Stranger Things season two is bad at all. One of them just has to come on bottom and season two is my least rewatched of the seasons. Robert says the Big Bang Theory is one of the unfunniest sitcoms of all time. I used to also hate on the show without even having seen it for some reason. It was just popular to hate on it. I watched some episodes. It's not the funniest. It's like sort of charming in a way, but it's definitely pretty low on like my sitcoms that I would ever want to binge. Jack says Hopper is a better character than Steve. I'm repping Steve right now, but I think I agree. Hopper and Steve have been my one and two back and forth forever now, but I think Hopper is just a little bit better of a character than Steve. I love them both so much. They're almost equals to me. Steve obviously had great arc going from this jerk boyfriend to one of the most lovable babysitter characters in the show. Hopper, on the other hand, had a family and a daughter who he lost, and then he kind of got a second chance at fatherhood with Eleven. It's a beautiful story. I hope that he has a happy ending, but I don't know. I feel like they might rip our hearts out. And the last hot take is from my boy Trevor over at Film Geeks. Everyone go check him out. I had to save the hottest take for last. He says, Breaking Bad is the most overrated show of all time. You guys know I disagree with this. I love Breaking Bad, and I'm like one of the few people who loves Breaking Bad and Stranger Things. I feel like the fandoms are just on at war on social media for some reason, but I think Breaking Bad is one of, if not the best written show of all time. From season one, episode one, to the finale of season five, Felina, we witness Walter White's descent into madness, and it's one of the best written characters I've ever seen. Characters like Jesse Pinkman, Saul Goodman, I mean, just some of the best written characters in TV, and everyone has a perfect ending in this show, especially if you count the whole Better Call Saul universe. It's a slow burn, not gonna lie, but it's a great drama, and we're witnessing this man slowly fall into a life of crime and break bad. And seasons four and five is when the show becomes more action-packed, and we get some memorable moments with Gustavo Fring and iconic quotes. Season five is wild. I mean, there are just moments in this show where I, my jaw was on the floor. I love it. I get it's not for everybody, but for me, it's a perfect show from beginning to end. So I don't think it's overrated. I think it is very properly rated as one of the GOAT TV shows.
But that does it for me reacting to all of your TV show hot takes. Drop some more in the comments down below. Maybe I'll do a part two to this video. And I definitely will be doing a part two to the movie hot takes. Might even get into like Marvel Stranger Things exclusive videos just for hot takes from those fandoms. Because I have a lot of fun doing these. And I hope you guys like them as well. So let me know if you do. But hit that like button again. Comment down below your thoughts on these hot takes. Subscribe and hit that notification bell as I am trying to hit my goal of 75,000 subscribers here on the channel. And until next time, I'll see you guys later.